Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. And let me guess, it's springtime, you're thinking about getting a motorcycle and you're looking at Hondas and Suzukis and Yamahas and Kawasaki's and you, you think you've got it narrowed down to a type of machine that you want to get. And so you've gone to the dealership or you've gone online and you've printed out all the specifications now what do all these numbers mean? I mean, there's just so many of them, so many measurements, so many factors that, that, that make up a machine's dynamics. What do they actually mean and what do you need to be looking for? So in this video, we're gonna walk through a spec sheet and discuss each part. And that way you can make a more informed decision as to which machine is gonna best fit you. And I'm actually comparing the CBR1000R, the GSX S1000, the Z900 and the MT10. And it really doesn't matter which ones you're comparing. I'm just gonna walk you through the listing so each section will make it a little bit more sense to you. So let's start with the first. Item number one, engine type. So all four of these particular machines, they're right at that one liter mark, give or take a CC or two. And in this particular segment, they're all either gonna be either a three or a four cylinder engine. When you're looking at a specific segment or a specific machine, chances are the specifications, as I just mentioned, they're gonna be really close. Now the next one's gonna be the important one. That's gonna be your bore and your stroke. What determines that is actually the bore, the piston, and the stroke of the crankshaft. Now what you're gonna find is a machine with a larger bore than the stroke is usually a higher revving engine because it has less distance to travel. Now conversely, if it has a longer stroke than bore, that typically means it has more torque instead of top end power. And it's gonna be subtle differences if you jump from one machine to another, but that's what you need to look for when you're test riding each one. Now in the next section, they're talking about induction or the actual intake of the fuel air mixture that's coming into the combustion chamber. Now all of them are gonna have programmed fuel injection with individual throttle bodies. I mean, that's gonna be across the board no matter which machine that you're looking at. I and mean, it is the best way to deliver a measured amount of air and fuel into an engine and everybody's doing it more or less the same way. Now each manufacturer is gonna call this system something a little bit different, but in the end, they all do the same thing. They measure the amount of air compared to the amount of fuel that is drawn into the combustion chamber. It's that simple. The other big factor when we're talking about the engine itself is gonna be your compression ratio because that determines how much bang is gonna happen after you've compressed that charge that came in through the intake system. The higher the compression, typically the more power the machine is going to develop. And a sport bike like this, you can see it anywhere from 10.5 all the way up to 12.5. It's something that you want to take note of in the specifications before you go out to ride to see if you can really feel that difference or not. Chances are you probably will. Next, let's look at the chassis. And when I say chassis, we're basically talking about the suspension, your tires, your brakes. The best way I can explain the chassis is those components are responsible for how the machine interacts and handles on whatever terrain that you happen to be on. On these particular machines in this particular segment, you're looking at a standard set of front forks, usually they're inverted, typically a cartridge type. Out back, you're either gonna have one or two shocks, I believe on all four of these machines, they just have a single shock because in this particular market, it's easier to control the rear swing arm with one shock versus two. Now on the cruiser side, you're typically gonna see a twin shock configuration, mainly because the cruisers typically have two riders versus a machine like this. For the most part, you're riding by yourself, most of the time. <laughs> Next, let's look at the dimensions of the bike. And first thing we wanna talk about is the rake or the caster angle of the forks. Now typically on a sport bike, that's gonna be a narrow angle like this. And with a, a cruiser, it's gonna be extended a little bit out. That makes it less darty. It's gonna to wanna to track in a straight line. With a sport bike, with the rate coming in, that's gonna make it easier to turn in sharply. The other thing we wanna talk about is actually the trail, and that is the distance. If you drop straight down from the axle and measure the distance where the forks, if they extended down to the ground, now those two in combination, that's gonna give you a feel for the handling characteristics of the machine. Next, your wheelbase and seat height, well, they're self-explanatory. But the longer the machine, the more stable it's gonna be. 
a little bit shorter wheelbase. It's going to turn in sharper easily and maybe pull up the front end quicker and more predictably than a, uh, a longer wheelbase. Now your seat height, that can be adjusted to a certain degree depending on the sag settings, but we won't get into that right now. But basically in between each machine, your seat heights, they're going to be fairly close depending on which segment that you're looking at. Now with all the different specifications that we've talked about, the most critical one for this particular segment is going to be your curb weight. The lower that curb weight, the better your power to weight ratio, and hence you're going to have fantastic acceleration. So you definitely want to pick that one out when you're looking at the sport or the super sport lineup. Well, all right, guys, that is just a quick overview of how to go through a spec sheet, and I aimed it mainly toward the sport market for this particular video. So which machine would I go with? I'm not going to tell you. I'm just telling you what to look for so you can make your own informed decision. Now, once you've made that decision and you finally need to get your bike serviced and you're going to do it yourself, save a little bit of money, why don't you come see us at partszilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can be notified to see whatever I'm working on or talking about next time. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.